Hi, and welcome to Jam of the Road Valley. I'm your host, David Nenow. And I'm your host, Cassandra Wass. Today we're going to be talking about one of the Road Valley's most underappreciated treasure institutions. It's not only a gem, but it has many gems. Yes, we are talking about the Crater Rock Museum located right here in the Rogue Valley in Central Point, Oregon. Many of you may not know this, but this is a unique museum which houses some of the finest displays of rocks, minerals, and gems on the West Coast. And besides the gems, gems and minerals, they also have exhibits with petrified woods, fossils, shells, Native American artifacts, and the list goes on. You'll have to go and travel many miles to find a museum of this type and quality, and it's right here in the Rogue Valley. Right here in the Rogue Valley. Yeah. I know, this place is amazing. So today we have a very special guest with us from the museum, Charles Rogers. He's a geologist and a teacher at Rogue Community College. He is also one of the curators at the Crater Rock Museum, and he's been with them for over 20 years. Charles, it's a pleasure, and we welcome you to our show. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. So, so, so <laughs> today we kind of like want to talk about the museum, uh, and we want to start with kind of getting an idea of its history, uh, how it kind of got started. Okay, sounds good. So, uh, can you tell us how uh, how long the museum has been around? Because I understand it goes back to like the 1950s. Yes, in 1952, uh, the Roxy and Gem and Mineral Society started, mm -hmm. uh, and that was you know started uh, for a couple years, and then the museum came in 1954. Okay. So it's been around since then. And the museum was set up to house a lot of the lapidary pieces and collections from rock hounds uh, in the society. Right. And they built displays to show their works and get the people involved as a general public. Okay. So uh, it's been, uh, it's gone through many stages since then, correct? It's been through a lot of different changes over the years. Uh, it started off with a pretty small little place uh, and uh, the Smiths were the first ones to start this, and they were basically farmers or beekeepers uh, and rock collectors. So they actually sold honey at the same time they sold rocks and gems <laughs> out of this gift shop. And it was a, a very welcome thing for the valley itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Well, I was told that a lot of the things in the museum are actually donations. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Uh, in fact, most everything has been donated, uh, wow. either from someone making a special piece or a collection that they have that they want to put uh, in, in display. It went into the museum, either in a case that was already built or they built a case for that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. So. How, are these donations local, or are they from all over the world, or where do they come from? Oh, I have to say that there are many different types of donations. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times there'll be a rock hound who works all his life collecting things, and his wow. family eventually donates his whole collection uh, just to keep it out for the public. But there are other people who have uh, very large collections from worldwide uh, oh. locations, and they donated to the museum either as individual pieces or uh, an entire collection, or even a mass collection has come into the museum. So is there like a rare donation that you have? Are there some rare pieces? We do have very rare pieces. Uh, and uh, one of the collections came in with an uh, extremely rare collection. We have a rhodochrosite specimen that is probably one or two of its kind that is a size. It's uh, about the size of a fist, but it's a very rare specimen that came from Colorado. Oh, very cool. And can I ask one more thing? Mm -hmm. So can, sure. can anybody donate to the museum? Anyone can donate to the museum. I have even donated to the <laughs> museum. <laughs> uh, my neighbor has donated to the museum. Uh, usually they take uh, the special pieces out of a donation wow. to put on display. Okay. So uh, usually we take very large or uh, very showy pieces and put them on display. Oh. Yeah, so I understand that like the museum uh, in its current form is like around 12,000 square feet or so. It so is. So it's, it's a pretty extensive, uh, as, a, as a member I've gone through, and it's 
uh, an amazing uh, set of, of displays. And, uh, and I understand that you've got like, uh, uh, when I was there, that you had people that were like, that just were just making, just constantly building and modifying the displays, keeping the displays up to date. Yes, we have had workers building displays. Uh, one of the greatest things is having someone to go through and clean this. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have someone that comes in every week and takes the display apart and dusts it and cleans it. And that's really an important thing. Uh, but there are many displays that have been built over the years. And what are the most popular displays that, that most people seem to respond to uh, well, when they visit the museum? It really depends on your interest. I know kids come in and they want to see the black light display. Right. Uh, yeah. And that's really a fun one to see the many different colors that come out of these sort of drab rocks uh -huh. that uh, just shine very brightly. But we do have a geology display that shows the igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary rocks. Uh, we, of course, have uh, an extensive fossil display, uh, a fossil room with a curation station where we clean and prepare fossils. Uh, we have an artifacts room. We also have uh, a petrified wood room that has uh, probably one of the largest petrified wood collections on the West Coast. Uh, and we have uh, uh, art glass. Uh, we have special scrimshaw that came from the East Coast that was donated. Uh, we have an amazing variety of stuff uh, that is on display, uh, ready to be on display, uh, or hope to be on display someday. Yeah. yeah, I know that in the past when I've gone through, one of, one of my favorites is, is the Petrified Wood Collection because it just absolutely amazes me the wide variety of patterns that, that are seen uh, in the different Petrified Wood examples. Yeah. And it's just some really gorgeous uh, Petrified material. wood is an excellent fossil. It really tells a lot about the habitat of the forest at the time that it was growing. Mm -hmm. Some of them are three or four hundred million years old. Wow. Others may be only 30 or 40 million years old. But petrified woods come in a variety of colors. Some of them are reds and greens and browns. Sometimes they show the rings in very much detail. Other times they're filled with agate and sometimes crystal structures. Uh, they give it a variety of shapes and patterns. Yeah, that's a really uh, cool material. One of my favorite, yeah. of course, is the palm wood. So it's basically a palm tree that's been petrified, and when you slice it open, you can see the, the uh, shapes and patterns of palm wood, sort of like tubes uh, that are formed in the wood itself. Very different than one with a lot of rings, mm -hmm. like a hardwood. Well, on the, uh, um, uh, among the more rare material, uh, do you have also like, a, like a meteorite material? And Yes, we have a collection of meteorites, uh, iron meteorites, uh, we have tektites, so we have some stony iron meteorites and some stony rocks that are there. We have quartz crystals. One of my favorite displays is really the pegmatite crystals themselves, which includes aquamarine, uh, spodumene, all kinds of other quartz crystals that are really beautiful, tourmaline. Mm -hmm. Those are a variety of different gems that are produced in these collections. Oh, very cool. You know, I was wondering, are, do you also have special exhibits of different things? And do you have any exhibits on, on display right now? Well, we do have special exhibits. In fact, when you enter into the museum, the first displays are some of our finest exhibits. And we have uh, quite a few lapidary pieces where Ooh. members have either <laughs> made an airplane Wow. But, or a bus out of uh, gems and minerals. We also have a carousel, a beautiful carousel I've that seen was, that. Yeah, that really was cool. built wow. uh, for a, a state fair and then donated to the museum. And it has uh, wow. several pounds of silver and of course lots of different cabs and uh, each horse is made out of petrified wood or agate. And it's really kind of a beautiful little specimen. Well, you know, speaking of carousels, yeah. um, I hear you guys have a real special day at the museum for Kids Day. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, Kids Day was one of our favorite things that we started about five years ago. Mm -hmm. And we decided we needed to have something for the kids mm -hmm. and the families yeah. together. Mm -hmm. So we, we put together a sort of a presentation with a craft to uh, get the kids involved and get the parents involved with helping the kids. 
And it's been well received. Uh, every month we have a kids day with a special uh, type of exhibit, uh, getting people and families involved in understanding about rocks. Now what I read was on the website, it's every second Saturday of the month that kids can come to Kids Day. Yes. And so they've got the, so you've got a craft going on, they can run around the museum, and then they also, you have a, a lecture for the kids? We do. We okay. put a slideshow together and a simple lecture to kind of keep them involved and educate them about that. Uh, we also have a, a space outside where they can collect rocks uh, for uh, really, for free, actually yeah. pick up free or very cheap. Uh, we get the parents involved uh, wow. to, to help yeah. them do this. And that's really important to get the parents and the kids to have something to do together. For sure. Yeah. And now as the museum, uh, I understand, offers memberships, right? Wow. So Yes. Um, what are the membership uh, costs, uh, membership benefits? There, there are, of course, individual memberships and family memberships. Uh, individual memberships are $15 a month, and they uh, they work to give you part, uh, be part of the club itself. Uh, I should say it's $15 a year, excuse me. Okay. Uh, That's an expensive. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> once you're a member, you can come to the club uh, and vote. But the really great advantage of being a membership is uh, being able to work in the lapidary shop. Oh. We have a very extensive lapidary shop where we have diamond grinders and polishers uh, and large diamond saws <laughs> and people come in all the time to work on their specimens either cut or cab or polish their rocks and uh, make some really beautiful things out of that workshop. Yeah I went uh, when I was a member uh, there before uh, I went through the initial uh, lapidary class Ooh, uh, oh good. As, as a member and uh, found it a really enjoyable experience to learn to cut the stones and, yeah. and kind of you know learn to use the grinders to, to, to make a cab uh, and, uh, uh, and it was uh, a really enjoyable experience. So uh, I definitely say that's one of the coolest uh, features of the, of the museum and of the membership. Yeah, we have classes of course on the diamond grinders and wow. on the saws. Oh, yeah. uh, and I think we're even getting together a, a gem and jewelry uh, station there so we can do some oh, silver really work uh, so, to set things. Yeah. So is that part of the society, right? The yes, you need to be a member to work in the lapidary shop. And uh, the, what, that's part and, of and, the... And so that's like, yeah. the, that's like the Roxy and Gem and Mineral Society. Right. Yes. That's when you, when you join, that's, that's where you're joining. Yes, right? the Roxy and uh, Gem and Mineral Society is really uh, the overlying curator or owner of the museum itself. Uh -huh. And it's basically a donation. Uh, process. Uh, the Roxanne Gym and Mental Society became a nonprofit organization in 1985. Wow. And that allowed them to take on a lot of specimens and really help the organization grow. Yeah, it sounds really wonderful. And so that, and that's a nonprofit organization? It is a nonprofit. Wow. And with our nonprofit, you know, we can take in specimens. Uh, people can get a tax write off if they need that. Uh, but it also, uh, endears us to educate the public about rocks, to actually give something back to the community. And really the biggest thing we're trying to do is keep the museum operating and open for the public, you know, at reasonable prices for them to come in, bring their family or their friends, and, and just see what people can do with rocks and the different types of rocks that are, that are available here in Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's a really wonderful facility. Now, Beyond the lapidary classes, are there any other kinds of classes or, or special event programs that the museum uh, and society uh, do? Yeah, the, we do field trips periodically, wow. usually during the summer, every month. A uh, group will get together on a Saturday and go out to a special site, and they'll get permission from the landowner. And we're all scouring around looking either from <laughs> agates or petrified wood or some type of uh, gem crystal, rock crystal. Uh, but it's really a lot of fun. Uh, most people get a few pieces, some people get more than others. <laughs> <laughs> and some people yeah. bring them back and cut them in the lapidary shop and make some really beautiful things. Didn't yeah. you go on those field I trips? I did. I went, on, I went on a couple of field trips and one uh, was when I was 40 pounds heavier and, 
and uh, it was uh, a bit of a burden because uh, okay. uh, we were walking up a hill and, and I got to a point where I was sweating too much and I was like, I got to get back to the car and go home. So <laughs> I didn't really, didn't really find anything that day, but it was fun to get out and be a part of a group uh, that was, I mean, it's like an adventure thing to go out and, yeah. and find some treasure, you know, so yeah, it was a cool thing. And Oregon has a lot of different types of rocks to go out and collect, so it's really a lot of fun to yeah. do. Okay, so the lapidary workshop, because I really want to get this straight. So you can do jewelry making there. Yes. Okay, and then is there mach those machines that you can cut the rocks in half? And you, I, what do the machines do exactly? Well, they're, they're diamond saws, mm -hmm. uh, and they dip into oil, so they have oil bath. Uh, you close the lid, you clamp your rock in there, and it basically moves through the saw blade and cuts a slab off of the rock. Wow. Uh, so you can mount it in different ways and cut a, a rock into different shapes and patterns or, or make slabs where you can make cabs and other kinds of jewelry out of them. Now, do you also have, among the equipment, uh, uh, faceting machines for, for gemstone faceting? Oh, oh, sometimes we do oh. some faceting, but that's a specialized type of lapidary. Right. And a lot of times we have some classes or people will have a faceting machine at their home uh, to do faceting of gemstones. Okay, cool. And I think that's on Wednesday nights, right? Where people can come in on Wednesday nights if they're part of the society and then they can come in and... For the lapidary yeah, shop? Yeah, yeah. The lapidary shop, I think, is open five days a week. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought, I thought we, it was only Wednesdays, We but, have okay. a, a, a couple people that take care of the shop and they open it more and more uh, wow. because we get more and more people wanting to come in to use the equipment. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. That's so really it, super it, it cool. just depends on how many people want to use it and how many people can we have to watch over the shop. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> really, yeah, it's really, that's one of the reasons why I joined uh, originally uh, to, was to learn the process of lapidary skills. Oh, good. You know, so mm -hmm. I want to get back into doing that. In fact, that's yeah. the same way, reason I joined was because I liked lapidary and I wanted a shop to, to work in and it really got me started. Yeah. Wow. That's, <laughs> I know. I ha at home, I have some of these round rocks, you uh, know, and I'd like to slice them in half and see, like, what kind of treasure is inside of them, you know what I mean? Yeah, you never <laughs> know. Yeah, it's right. always a mystery. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, one of the, it's a great mystery, and it's something that's easily can be uh, discovered what's inside, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, among the uh, material we've got, we have, like, uh, thunder eggs, which we have a thunder egg example on our, um, on our table here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and thunder eggs, I find, are always a, a, a great thing because uh, the patterns that come out that can be seen in a cut thunder egg are pretty awesome. Yeah, thunder eggs are great. Uh, they have a, a round feature like an egg. Uh, <laughs> and if you can cut it just right, you can end up with some beautiful mm. agate shapes in the middle. Mm. Uh, it's a really amazing. And um, uh, thunder eggs are Oregon State Rock. Yeah. So I just want to um, bring up that you have a volunteer program yes. at the museum. So can just anyone volunteer? And uh, the museum depends on its volunteers. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of volunteers there. Okay. Uh, and volunteers basically do a lot of the odd jobs, uh, help uh, the, the main people that work there. Uh, so volunteers are really important yeah. uh, and all members are welcome and encouraged to volunteer. Nice. Very so they could probably nice. just go to the website and call up and say, I want to be a volunteer. So that would be great. Yeah. 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 It's a really great facility. So yeah, the more people that can, uh, can assist, the, the better it, it, it gets. So. Yes. Absolutely. So, so oh, I, before we go to our yeah. table, I was yeah. wondering, there's also one other thing. Mm -hmm. You guys do a rock and gem show. Yes. Yeah. And Every yeah. year. Yeah, and that was just, in fact, you just had it last month. Yes. Uh, at the beginning of April. Over okay. at the Expo and, yeah. is where we have our wow. rock and gem yeah. and mineral show. And I, I make that, I've been making it every year for like the last three years. Uh, and it's an amazing experience. I mean, you just, the, the wide variety of material and the, and the number of vendors that are to be seen there. We collect vendors from all over the U.S. that come here and display their things to sell them to the general public. Uh, we also have uh, cases that show... Uh, people's work that are part of the membership uh, and awesome. most people that are helping there are volunteers to make this a really a great show for the valley. Nice. Yeah, 
and uh, and so that's that's like the one big show that you do every every year. Uh, are there any other events similar uh, that you do during the year, or is that like the, your big thing? That is our big show, okay. and it it helps uh, helps support the museum, uh, and it helps bring more people to the valley and more excitement because we we end up bringing rocks and minerals that we would <laughs> normally see yeah. from these dealers that travel all over, right. bringing the materials to yeah. to the place. And we also have our cases, uh, plus special cases there. Uh, black light cases, fossil displays, all kinds of really neat uh, things happen at that gym show. Yeah, and as I recall, like at, at last month when I went, they also had like a, a table set up for uh, soapstone carving for children to to mm -hmm. play and, and, and mess around yep. with. So uh, yeah, nice. that was kind and of. And we cool. have a silent auction too, uh, so you can you know sort of <laughs> buy your own petrified wood piece for a dollar or two. Yeah. So it's really kind of neat. Uh, yeah. So everybody can get something from there, whether you have a lot of money or just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think at this point we're going to go to our goodies, yeah. huh? Because we've got this we've got big a wonderful table. display here. So. Yeah. So, um, well, what should we start with? Well, let's start with uh, the metrodite, which is uh, that piece right there, as I recall, right? That's yeah, this is a piece of metro metrodite. I'll pick it up here. Uh, metrodite, of course, is a beautiful petrified wood type mineral uh, filled with agate special uh, structural patterns in this medfordite really make it a unique feature uh, and this one of course has been cut a little bit but it still has a lot of the raw specimens still intact and that is found up uh, along roxy ann around roxy ann yeah. peak yeah. Bet. Okay. all around it yeah. you'll find medfordite okay uh, cool okay and um what is this one over here Pick so that one this up. one is a thunder egg. This Whoa. is the state rock of Oregon, and uh, thunder egg has a red rind around it of rhyolite, and on the inside is agate. This one's been cut, so it shows these concentric circles mm -hmm. uh, of the agate itself, how it developed, and it develops in a real unique pattern in this thunder egg. And so this is like. You know, you made that good, that just right cut, and then you yeah. got this beautiful, I mean, this is just a gem yeah. inside of there. That's yeah. incredible. And if it would have been cut a different way, you would have had a different, different pattern. A different pattern. <laughs> so, but this is what it turned out. It's a very beautiful piece. Love that. Yeah. Love that. So what do we got up next? And then we got, this is why, this is a, a large piece of amethyst, correct? Amethyst, yes. Amethyst quartz crystals, uh, beautiful purple color. Uh, this one is a piece of a large geode uh, with that, that houses uh, amethyst. And we have several amethyst crystals on display at the museum. And where do we think this one came from? Uh, I think this one's from Brazil. Oh, okay. uh, Brazil uh, brings a lot of these amethysts up, and this was part of one of those large geodes. Okay, and how about over here? What have we got? These little specimens. Okay, and I'll pick up both of these. <laughs> okay, these great. are trilobites. Uh, a little bit small here, but of course they're marine organisms uh, from the Paleozoic. Uh, nice. Some of them are three or four, five hundred million year old, and they are now extinct. But these are great fossils that have been sandblasted out of the rock to show the details of the trilobite shape. And you can see there's some horns. They got little tongues, and this one's got a fork shape to it. But it's really nice. We have an excellent display of trilobites there. Uh, world class display. Mm, about this one. I like that one. Oh yeah, now that one of course is a petrified wood slab. Wow. And the log itself was fairly large and it was cut into slabs and then polished into that pattern. And this of course is an aracaria log and you can see the rings in there along with agate filling some of the cavities. Uh, a really beautiful specimen. How old do you think this is? Aracaria is about uh, oh, two, three, or four hundred million years. Uh, we would have to look at the uh, the records on that to see how old it really is. But they're fairly old. Yeah, I understand having gone through the the, uh, the museum display that uh, that there are certain kinds of of petrified wood patterns that are still like kind of mysterious in terms of being able to identify 
uh, with species for certain petrified woods? Identifying the species type is a real difficult uh, thing, and it's a specialized science in itself. You have to look very closely at the cell structure. Sometimes we take a thin section and put it in a microscope, and you can see the individual structures and decide what type of wood it might have been like. Mm -hmm. So it's right. an ancient variety of modern woods. Wow. Uh, and there are many different types, either pine-like or fir-like. This one's an aracaria, which is related to the monkey puzzle tree. Uh, monkey okay. puzzle tree still exists today, but okay. that's what the aracaria is. Okay. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. So we've got, this is like an artifact here, huh? Is that yeah. Indian? Or? Yes, this is a grindstone in Matadi. We have a big collection of these. Uh, they I used it for grinding their corn or acorns and wow. uh, really kind of a, a neat piece. So this is one of our smaller ones, but still intact. So you can uh, you know, grind your acorns when you feel like eating acorns. All right, that's <laughs> gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we have what, this is like an ammonite? Is yeah, now this correct? is sort of, this is an ammonite, and this, you can see the ammonite structure there. Oh, wow. It's a coiled, uh, these are related to the octopus, right. uh, ancient organism. And this one actually has been carved, so it shows a skull. <laughs> uh, and it, the skull was designed to be like a Neanderthal uh -huh. skull, so this one got uh, carved into a shape that gives it some, some type of life. That's great. Uh, interesting life. You know, that, that's one of the pieces that uh, our society encourages is to work the rock and make something really beautiful out of them. All right, well, we've just got a little bit of time left, and we've got two pieces here. So can you tell us about those two okay. last pieces? Now, this one here is a cluster mm -hmm. of a galena and calcite crystals, Gorgeous. and they form together. Uh, it's really kind of nice. We have an a incredible collection of mineral specimens and clusters and this is just one of the small ones that might right. be at the museum uh, variety is is endless from world collection sites uh -huh. uh, this one here again is a uh, is a carving of a mermaid uh, out of opal uh, on <laughs> malachite yeah. just an example of what you can do with a gemstone if you're so inclined to go that far to try to carve a living figure out of the stone itself Wow. Yeah, and I love that. That's that's malachite happens to be one of my favorite stones that I Me like too. to collect. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, I love the variety that, of malachite that can be found. The colors are really nice. The layered patterns, the way it's cut, gives it concentric circles. Okay. Great. Right. Well, thank you so much. And well, so, hey. <laughs> been, it's been a really great uh, uh, experience in learning about the museum. And uh, so that's all the time that we're going to uh, have today. And uh, we thank you for joining us uh, and, uh, and exploring uh, Gem of the Road Valley. And uh, I want to give a special thanks to our guest, yeah. Charles uh, Rogers, yeah. for sharing with us his uh, experience in, and information about the museum. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to thank our crew for yeah. helping us uh, put this all together. And we sure hope that you'll visit the Crater Rock Museum, enjoy the many exhibits and opportunities that they have to offer, and don't forget about Kids Day. And so it's your host, David Nienow. And I'm Cassandra Wallace, and we'll, we'll see, see you, you next, next time. time. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do we do?